Splatoon's Splat Zones can be more than a little frustrating, especially with how difficult the climb to A rank is. Since it requires a sharper set of skills when compared to Turf War, Splat Zones end up becoming very intense and all the more aggravating if you lose. As you attempt to hold down zones to win, here are 5 tips to help you achieve victory, as well as an example of an a ranked match at the end, so players can observe, learn, and emulate the strategies shown. Choosing your abilities For ranked matches, your gear is extremely important. Naturally, you should pick the gear that complements not only your weapon, but your playstyle. Ink Savers are amazing abilities, as are special charge-ups. That said, a few of the best abilities are Ninja Squid, Ink Resistance, and Stealth Jump. Ninja Squid allows you to hide perfectly in your ink without leaving a trail or sound, which is especially handy for ambushing and surprising foes. Ink Resistance is one of the most important abilities, since you can still move and jump an enemy ink, which in ranked battles is downright life-saving. Stealth Jump is wonderful too, as it hides the marker when you super jump so enemies won't notice you when you jump in to join the fray. However, Ink Resistance and Stealth Jump can only be obtained from the main slot on Shoes, and considering I prefer Ink Resistance, I don't have any experience to speak of with Stealth Jump, aside from killing other people who lack that ability. Heading to the Splat Zone, or not. Obviously the goal of Splat Zones is to seize control of the territory, but if your team is heading toward the Splat Zone, it might be a good idea to take the long way around. You can strike enemies from behind and break apart their formation, allowing your teammates to take out the stragglers, assuming the enemies haven't killed them yet. A level like Salt Spray Rig is the most obvious choice where taking the long route will yield the best results, while a map like Kelp Dome is far too small and open-ended to warrant traveling around the long way. You might also want to stay away from the Splat Zone for a bit to charge your special meter, since there's nothing more aggravating than being only a sliver away from having a full special and then dying with it. The Art of Battle Unlike Turf War, Splat Zones is all about preventing the enemy from taking the zone. Obviously, killing enemies before they even approach the zone is preferable, so Ninja Squid is extremely helpful for making surprise attacks and knocking out an opponent in one fell swoop. You always need to keep moving unless you're attempting to camp their spawn. Now if the enemies have taken control of the Splat Zone, don't rush in blindly, especially if you don't have any teammates near you. That's a surefire way of getting yourself killed and wasting your precious time. If you must wait for teammates, aim from behind a wall, around a corner, or from above. Try to distract at least one player and pull them away. After all, it's easier to fight one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one rather than four-on-one. -on -one. Use sub-weapons to distract or ink an area. Never approach head-on unless you know you have support, or there are only one or two enemies in the zone. And even then, it can be risky unless you know your weapon extremely well. Combating enemy special weapons, such as the Kraken, Ink Zuka, or Ink Strike, all have to be handled differently. I'll talk about the former two in a bit. When an enemy's Ink Strike comes down, the best thing you can do is to ink the tornado with your main weapon. Your ink still gets sprayed on the ground, as the tornado starts from the center and works outward, so keep spraying and the tornado's overall effect will be lessened. Lastly, this is a personal preference, but I use motion controls and have the sensitivity pushed as high as it can go. This is so I can always survey my surroundings in a flash, and considering how hectic splat zones can be, it's incredibly important to stay aware. I have nothing against dual sticks, but I couldn't bear to lose control over my aim even for a split second just to press the jump button. When to run away, and where not to die. You should try to never die. Sounds obvious, right? Even so, the Splat Zone is absolutely dangerous, and sometimes the best option is to run away. You definitely don't want to die in the Splat Zone, as you'll explode in a spray of enemy ink making it even tougher to retake the zone. This is again where Ninja Squid and Ink Resistance come into play. If you find yourself in a dire situation, such as confronting a Kraken or Ink Zuka, it might be better to flee for a few seconds before rejoining the fray. Enemies won't be able to properly follow you thanks to Ninja Squid, and when an opponent thinks you're running away, there might not be a better time to surprise them with Ninja Squid and splat them. Super Jumping and You I've seen this far too many times in the Splat Zones. 
How many times have you or your teammates super jumped into the fray, only to be killed almost instantly upon landing? Perhaps more often than anyone would like. The marker super jump makes as you descend can be devastating to see, but stealth jump is a good fix. That said, if you want to super jump, you should try areas where enemies don't normally go, such as the hallways of Arowana Mall, or behind enemy lines with a teammate or squid beacon. Never super jump directly to a splash zone unless you control it and your teammates are there. And even then it's a risky proposition. It might be better to simply swim and walk there, spraying ink over uncovered areas or enemy ink to build your special meter. It's easy to get angry or frustrated with ranked battles, but experience and practice are the best kinds of teachers. If you find yourself getting angry, take a break and come back later. Stress only makes you perform worse. Thank <laughs> you.